Meantime, in other news, Tesla's earnings out Wednesday still uh, capturing investors' attention. The company reporting a lower than expected profit and record revenue, mixed results thus that disappointed investors who are used to more razzle dazzle from Elon Musk's company. Uh, despite giving a six straight profitable quarter, uh, Tesla missing estimates for the first time since July 2019. Tasha Keeney with us, analyst at ARK Invest. Tasha, what's your read on this? Yeah, well, you know, I'd say in general, um, at ARC, as, as we've talked about before, we're long-term investors. And I, I think that's sort of the, the lens that you should put on innovation is look to the long term. Um, so a company like Tesla, you know, the quarter to quarter results, uh, we're not we're not exactly tracking to them. Um, you know, I think there are two uh, really important takeaways from the call that I took. Um, the first is if you look at electric vehicles broadly, um, which I which I think are the you know the undeniable future of the auto industry. Um, the Model S is the you know it came out. The new Model S is going to have um, unbeatable range, uh, zero to sixty acceleration, and in, in less than two seconds. Um, I mean, most automakers are trying to catch up to the original Model S, and and now you see this new variant. It, it really just highlights that. Tesla's the leader here, and it's just going to become harder for other automakers to compete on price and performance. The second thing I'd note is for autonomous technology. Um, when you look at Tesla's valuation, which is, you know, um, often sort of uh, there's a lot of speculation about uh, whether or not this makes sense. I, I think that, you know, as, as Elon said in the call last night, a lot of analysts aren't considering this opportunity in autonomous driving. At Arginvest, we've done a lot of work on that. So we actually just put out our big ideas report, and we talk about the, the future of a uh, autonomous vehicles, I think the operating earnings to the platform providers like Tesla uh, could be worth over a trillion dollars globally by 2030. So this is a massive opportunity. Um, you know, Tesla's really uh, a, a key player here as they have uh, probably the biggest data advantage out of, out of anyone um, competing. And, and I think that's important perspective to keep. Tasha, we also saw Apple shares uh, under pressure despite a, a strong quarter there. And I'm curious, do you think some of the the you know market dynamics we were seeing more broadly with with what was happening with GameStop and the uh, brokerages pausing certain transactions? Do you think that impacted Tesla shares today? Uh, you know, I, I, I as as we you've talked about it, I think a, a lot of uh, sort of crazy things are going on right now. Um, I, I'd say longer term, you know, uh, we think that fundamentals are, are going are gonna to win out. So, um, again, if, if that were to be the case, I, I would say that's, that's you know, a, a sort of a short term phenomenon. And, um, you know, with disruptive innovation, it grows at um, an exponential rate. Uh, so you really have to have that sort of five year uh, time horizon as, as we do at ARK Invest. I want to talk a little bit about China. You've got competition not far away in China and the United States, and, and the price cuts in China are driving margins lower. Um, how concerned are you about that? Well, when we think of margins and, and price cuts, I, I mean, the work that we've done on electric vehicles, so so the reason that we think um, EVs are so competitive is because battery costs are declining. Um, we use something called Wright's Law to forecast the, the cost decline of batteries. And uh, for every cumulative doubling in production, you get a corresponding reduction in, in price. Uh, so that's the cost curve that, that Tesla's following. So that should allow for uh, better gross margins, or again, you could offer lower price cars. I mean, the $25,000 car that they plan on producing over the next uh, three years, I think I think is the, the biggest you know case of that, of, of sort of this, this crossover point with um, electric vehicle prices versus gas powered cars that's really enabled by that cost decline. Um, you know, I, I think there there is competition in the EV space, and there should be, um, because you know we think that EVs could grow to uh, 40 million uh, units annually um, in, in the next five years. So I think that that figure, um, you know, with my co my colleague Sam Corris has done a lot of work on, really depends on uh, traditional automakers and these competitors making electric vehicles too. Tesla's not going to be the only player. Um, we do see them dominating uh, the market now. You know, they have the, the the best market share. They have over 20 percent of the electric vehicle market. You know, they're the number one brand in, in, in China as well. And and that's something that's really been hard for any foreign automaker, um, you know, to to sort of wholly own their factory. Tesla's the first to do that there. So, so I think they've had, had great success, um, and, and competition's not a surprise. What do you think the most promising competitors are? Who are you watching? 
So when you look at electric vehicles in China, um, one, one company that uh, we think is interesting is, is BYD. So um, in China, Tesla is looking to uh, a different type of battery in their vehicles, lithium ion phosphate. Um, BYD has, has, been, has been building on uh, you know, that form factor for, uh, for, for some time. Um, and, and there's another, uh, I'd say, leader in, in electric vehicles. Um, we've looked at some of the, the startups, um, the newer players in the space. I, I think they're interesting. We are certainly keeping an eye on them. Right now, their valuations just don't make sense for us. Um, and, and a lot of these companies, uh, you know, we've seen with Tesla that scaling um, is not a feat to be overlooked, right? The, the, the manufacturing expertise that you need to, to get to scale is really crucial here. So I, I think that's something to look out for um, with, with these newer players. Um, you know, I think things in China can happen very quickly. Uh, so, you know, we're, 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 we're aware of that. Um, but, but so far, you know, they, they do still seem to have the best technology on the market, you know, from a battery, but also a software perspective, um, you know, with, with autonomous driving and autopilot. Um, we haven't seen anyone meet that mark yet. Um, but again, we do expect other players to, to come in. So, look, I know you're bullish on Tesla, but what do you think the biggest headwinds are? What do you what do you think are the biggest challenges ahead? Well, I think, um, you know, one critical step for Tesla is solving for fully autonomous driving. So last night on the call, Elon said that he thinks that Tesla could do that within the year. Um, you know, I, I think that, again, Tesla has this data advantage. They're collecting information from their customer cars. Um, no one else has a fleet that is the size of Tesla's when it comes to autonomous driving because every other player is using uh, fleets of prototypes that you know usually uh, number at most in the hundreds. So uh, they do have this uh, uh, amazing lead that could allow them to to launch on say like a national level as opposed to city by city where where Waymo um, will likely have to go that route. Um, but they still have to prove that they they can do it right and 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 we haven't seen that yet. Um, so, you know, in, in the valuation model that we, we published, we actually only assign a 30% probability to that actually happening. Um, that said, one, one of, some of the newer research I've done is, is looking at Tesla's opportunity in ride hailing. So Tesla says they're gonna go all in on robo taxi and that's, and that's, you know, eye on the prize. Um, I think they could launch a ride hailing network ahead of full autonomy with human drivers behind the wheel and they'd still get that nice recurring revenue stream, those high margins that we expect off of those autonomous taxi platforms. And they'd have a lot of competitive advantages against Uber and Lyft because they're lower, uh, it's a lower cost per mile to drive a Tesla. They have vertically integrated insurance. Um, we think they could do it better than the other players out there and potentially take a higher cut of the gross revenues off of the system because of those cost advantages um, and even perhaps pay their drivers more. Um, so I think, you know, autonomous is, is not certain, but um, there is that potential sort of uh, downside protection if they, if they were to, uh, to launch a ride hailing service. All right, Tasha Keedy of ARK Invest, always great to have your thoughts here on the show. Thank you so much for joining us and weighing in.